Games pass for the Patriots, they've been soft in the middle. In this game, they change, and they're running more sa single safety in the middle of the field. And so whereas Chandler expected there to be a gap there, there was a safety standing right where he wanted to throw it. Now McGinnis now with 48 and a half career sacks. Patriots showing six, seven men in the box. They bring some heat. Chandler reads it, dumps it underneath, incomplete. Tony Martin to the intended receiver. And New England's defense up front, Hamilton Mitchell and Anthony Pleasant. Backers, Vrabel, Johnson, Bruski, and Pfeiffer. And the backfield of Law and Smith are the corners. Jones and Malloy are your safeties. And you've got to give the Patriots defense credit there. That was a change in scheme. More attacking with the safety in the middle. Atlanta wasn't ready for it. Chris Moore. His foot is not answered this season. Worst average in the NFC with a 37.6 average. High hanger, fair catch taken at the 33-yard line. So, second chance coming up for Brady and the Patriots, and we'll be back. Log on to NFL.com and vote for the AFC NFC All-Stars that play in the 2002 Pro Bowl. Vote now only at NFL.com or AOL keyword NFL.com. Brady, nice job. Hard cadence count. I love that. I absolutely love that. He's a, a young quarterback on the road and in a dome. Defense, number 98. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Travis Hall, the left tackle. The first series, he goes three and out. And in the next series, he gets into the head of the defensive line. Let's listen to this hard count. I like that. First down and five. Mark Edwards. Stacked up, picks up three to the 42-yard line. Keith Brooking made the tackle. Well, see, this is why he goes to the hard count, Craig, because it slows up the attacking nature of Atlanta's defensive line. That's a different style this year than last. Last year, Atlanta's defensive line was catch the offensive lineman, read and react. This year, it is attack. And so it's a good thing for the offensive line, for the quarterback to do hard counts, because the defensive line can't get the jump. Second down and one. Brady, they flush that backfield clean with five wideouts. Good protection, weights underneath, and complete. He wanted Patrick pass. So third down, call it one. You know, very aggressive play calling early, though. That's the second time this drive they've gone to an empty backfield. Drew Bledsoe calling in the play to, to, to Brady has been absolutely spectacular in helping this young guy. He has been so graciously giving. A lot of people think to the detriment of his own career. Tough yards, it's going to be close as Edwards turned his body and tried to slice in for the first down around the 43-yard line. Brooking again around the football. You know, Brooking, we had a nice talk with him yesterday. He replaced a great legend here in Atlanta, uh, linebacker Jesse Tuggle, who retired. Uh, the teammates, though, are calling him Honolulu there, Trevor, because of uh, Pro Bowl possibilities. Yeah, he, he's probably the best linebacker you've never heard of. And now he's starting to get the recognition. And as he goes to Hawaii and goes to those Pro Bowls, he will. He's, he was an outside linebacker. He had the range and speed out there. And now they moved him this year inside, partly because they wanted to get number 54, Chris Draft, some place to play. But because of that, you've got a middle linebacker with the speed and the range of an inside linebacker. Now, here's what's important about that first down right there. They barely made it, right? Remember that hard count yeah, at the beginning yeah. of the drive? They only had to get five yards, and they got five yards and a foot. As we take a look here, yeah, Mark Edwards gets over. He gets the first, but he got it because of the hard count two plays before. First and ten, Brady sets up the screen at the 40-yard line. A lot of running room. Oh, contact. Oh, delivering the hit was Antoine Smith. He knew the belt was coming from McBurrows. And so instead of taking the hit, you know, Trevor, he said, I'm going to dish it out, too. Yeah, and he's talking, too. <laughs> McBurrows, give him credit. 
but it's going to be a screen. It's going to come over here and then watch Mike Compton, the left guard number 77. He's going to be the key to the play. Here he is right there. Now he's going to stay up on his man. He doesn't have to drive him anywhere. He just has to stay in his face. The back will then make the cut. 17-yard pickup. Back-to-back -back first downs. Brady, deep ball on the button. Incomplete. Terrell Buckley was the intended receiver. Number 27. Now, Buckley on your charts listed as too deep at the right corner. Yeah, and Ray Buchanan is looking at a cornerback, knows what's going to happen. A corner is not going to run a route. He's just a way he's going to cut. He's going to run straight up the field. So basically, Ray Buchanan knew, hey, if I just beat him in the foot race yeah. or tie him, I got him. Well, you're looking at one of the most intense corners, most vocal corners in the National Football League. Patton in motion on second down. Brady poised and now taken down from behind, wrapped up by Patrick Kearney. Number 97, the third year pro out of Virginia and a former number one round draft pick by this club back in 99. And this is the pass rushing style they want. Collapse the pocket. Take a look at Travis Hall, number 98. Kearney's 97, but 98 Hall is the one that gets his hand up in the face and forces Brady to pull that ball down, and that gives Kearney time to come around and tackle him from behind. Collapse the pocket collectively, and you squeeze the quarterback. Third down, three wideouts. Brady, play action, throws a dart complete inside the 20 down to the 15-yard line, and it was right on the button to Troy Brown. Well, and it had to be on the button. Conrad Hamilton had perfect coverage on Troy Brown, and Brady, if you have a question as to whether he's rattled, he gets pressured in the pocket. He's gonna move to his left, wait for Brown to clear, and then drill that ball. Moves to his left and drills it, and look at the coverage. There's two guys with a third. The linebacker coming in, Chris Draft, and Brady drilled it in. Troy Brown picks up 28. Another first down. Smith lost it. Falcons pointing the other way. And a nice drive by New England is stopped at the 13-yard line. Kearney brought the loose football in for the Falcons. Boy, that's a here we go again for New England. Had lots of problems with fumbles last year. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines, proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of Super Bowl 36. Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. And by Nextel, how business gets done. A beautiful skyline of Atlanta now inside the Georgia Dome, scoreless between New England and Atlanta. Second offensive series for the Falcons. Stopped after that fumble by Antoine Smith. First and 10. They'll start this drive at their own 13-yard line. Chandler sets up the screen incomplete off the hands of Maurice Smith. Yeah, and he does set it up. The, the whole setup to this entire offense is the run. Everything comes off the run. Play action pass is how they get the deep ball thrown. And off the run, they want to throw the screen. The problem is that Maurice Smith ran into uh, Bobby Hamilton, number 91, and couldn't get out. Second down at 10, 8.23 left, opening quarter. Pocket, not much time for Chandler, and he takes his seat. Boy, the corners came in and pinched. Hamilton, Pleasant, and the rest of the guys in white. Yeah, and this is the changing game plan, Craig. New England has sat back in a soft zone the last several games. And so Chandler doesn't expect the corner. Doesn't even see him coming. And they have now had more man coverage in this game plan for Atlanta's offense. And this is a change. Atlanta right now has to make an adjustment because their expectation in play calling is to play a soft zone and not a lot of pressure from blitzes. That's not what they're getting. Chandler on third down has the best quarterback rating in the National Football League at just over 120. He's looking at third and 17 from his end zone. Steps up and can run. Tucks it and then taken down at the 14-yard line by Parker. 
Number 97, Riddick Parker, five-year pro out of North Carolina. Well, there's a lot of pressure here. And there's pressure from the defensive line. This time, they don't blitz. The reason they don't blitz is because they want to leave eight guys back in coverage. That's why Chandler had nowhere to throw. Second punt of the day for Chris Moore. His first travel 36 yards. He's a yard deep in his end zone. Troy Brown awaits. Fair catch. Angled to the far sideline. And they're going to mark this... This ball out around the 40. Another and some boo birds early here in Atlanta. Not a good kick by Moore. 27 yards. Scoreless at the Georgia Dome. 7.05 left opening quarter. There's Brady Trevor. Week six at Indy, 7 of 7. Last week against Denver, 8 of 8. He started slow, 2 of 5. But I was impressed with the throw to Troy Brown just before the fumble by Antoine Smith. Yeah, he's not two of five because he's performing poorly. He's two of five because there's very good pass defense. He's playing against two of the best corners in the NFL in Ray Buchanan and Ashley, Ash Ashley Ambrose. And both of those guys will play very tight coverage on his receivers. And so it'll be hard to complete those easy underneath passes that he's completed in games past. Second down and nine. Near sideline, not much. Good read by Atlanta's defense as Troy Brown is pushed back to the 41. Ambrose, Ashley Ambrose, the right corner, 10 years out of Mississippi Valley College. And that's the tight coverage. I mean, that play has worked for the last four games for the Patriots and for Tom Brady because corners have played off of these receivers. But you can see number 33 just flashed at the bottom of your screen. He was right on the line of scrimmage at the beginning of this play. And that's how they're going to play it all game long. So he told us uh, yesterday in our meetings that Ambrose says, I like to play tight while Ray likes to play, play a little bit looser. Shotgun, Brady. Good protection throws and a little hop on his skip incomplete. David Patton at the 25. Ray Buchanan back there on coverage. And now they're going to have to punt. And once again, that fumble just stopped all the momentum that the Patriots offense had built up. Although field position, when you look at this exchange of punts, Craig, just with the exchange of punts right now, the Patriots have gained about 30 yards of field position. They're punting from their own 41. Walter will punt for the second time. His first kick of 27 yards. Left footer gets it up. Another high hanger and a fair catch taken by Darren Gordon at the 10. 30 yard kick, still scoreless in Atlanta. We'll be back. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Staples. Staples has everything you need for your business at great low prices. And by IBM, taking e business and your business to the next level. Well, Monday on CBS, it's an all-new night of great television, starting with the King of Queens, followed by Yes, Dear, and Monday's number one comedy, comedy Everybody Loves Raymond. Then stay tuned for the Ted Danson and Becker. Plus, don't miss an all-new Family Law. It's all here, Monday on CBS. Third drive of the quarter for Atlanta. Mathis in motion. They go ground, not much. Let's go to New York. Jim Nance with an NFL Today update. Jim. All right, Bober, 21 months ago, right there in the Georgia Dome, Kevin Dyson reached for that final yard against the Rams and was denied. Today, he takes the pass from McNair. He reaches, and he gets it this time for the quick 7-0 seven. Seven Titans over Jacksonville. And let's go back to Craig and Trevor. Thank you, Jim. Dyson from the University of Utah coming off a, a very bad, bad knee injury. Oh, look at the first three possessions. Seven plays, minus two yards, two sacks, and twice three and out. Chandler sets and throws. Incomplete. Reggie Kelly, the tight end. Good coverage, though, by the outside linebacker, Mike Vrabel. You know what? You look at that Kevin Dyson reaches, and uh, you think about what if in that Super Bowl. Yeah. And I'll tell you, what would he give to swap plays? <laughs> Let me be a yard short today and a, an inch over the line then. 
What if? What if? Third down and nine. Chris Chandler, 36 years young. You know, he said, hey, I'm, I, I know my position. I may play three or four more. Chandler sets and throws complete at the 27-yard line. And a great grab by Tony Martin. Nice to be back, huh, Tony, after missing four games with that broken collarbone. That first one's always the toughest. Because you're going to get hit, and then you're going to hit the ground. Now he's got a broken collarbone. He's going to hit the ground, and he's going to get landed on by Otis Smith. And how does it feel? You know what? He jogged off the field. He's not there now. But we'll know in a few minutes if he comes back whether or not that thing felt okay. 16-yard gain, first down, Falcons at their own 27-yard line. Pitch out. Mo Smith breaks it. Smith at the 50. Maurice Smith at the 30. And a herd of Patriots take him down at the 14-yard line, led by Ty Law. Well, they had an eight-man front up to stop the run. That means you'd better stop it or there'll be a lot of space. The problem here is with three safety, the last line of defense to Bucky Jones. He's right here. He's going to come inside. The back is going to cut outside, and to Bucky's going to get stuck right there. And that's what's going to allow Maurice Smith. Now look at the Bucky. He's inside, and Maurice Smith cuts just to the outside. And now, because it was an eight-man front, there's nobody left in the backfield. 58-yard run for Maurice Smith to the 14-yard line of New England. First and 10, Falcons. Smith cut down around the 12-yard line. Well, what a turnaround this is, Craig. New England had Atlanta backed up the first three drives way back inside their own 20, and all of a sudden, two plays later, they're down in the opposite red zone. It's big plays that make the difference. When you look at what kinds of plays make a winning team in the NFL, one is turnovers and one is big plays, meaning runs over 10 yards and passes over 15 yards, and they just had two in a row. In the red zone, Chandler very effective. The Falcons offensively 17 times inside the 20. Eight touchdowns, eight field goals. Again, right side, big hole, and it closes quickly at the five. Maurice Smith. Boy, this has been his drive. But there is a flag holding. So take that game back. Boy, and penalties. We're still in the first quarter. And that's the third penalty. And Dan Reeves' teams are usually very, very disciplined. This is this is just, again, both teams are trying, are trying to get some momentum. They're trying to get uh, something going on. But it seems like whenever they start something. Holding. Offense number 62. The spot of the foul. And the dead ball spot were both beyond the line of scrimmage. We will penalize from the spot of the foul, 10 yards. <laughs> Bear hug. Down, second down, number 62. I'll tell you something, that, that, <laughs> they call that a bear hug. They, Leo Buscalia would be happy with that. <laughs> you need 10 hugs a day. Well, now Ted Johnson has his first He's hug. He's got his first. Yeah. Four flags. Four flags for the Falcons in this opening quarter for 35 yards. New England yet to be flagged. Movement. Chandler ducks trouble, sets, throws, and a knee! Another flag. Hold on. John Jefferson on a knee caught the pass, but there's one, two flags down. Well, you have something at the line of scrimmage. It's either a false start or an offsides. You've definitely got pass interference in the back of the end zone against the Bucky Jones. The funny thing there is that to Bucky Jones. Offside, defense, number 91. That penalty is declined. Pass interference, defense, number 34. That penalty is declined. Touchdown. John Jefferson with the touchdown. Durable wide out, missing only one game the past 11 seasons, and he picks one up on a knee. And this play breaks down, and Chandler sees that to Bucky Jones, number 34, thinks that the play's over, and he takes his eyes off of Jefferson, and Chandler has enough confidence in Jefferson that if, he's, if he gets the ball in there, he'll take it away, and he did. Feely, the extra point to come. 
perfect 12 for 12. Now 13 of 13 in the point after department. And so after some early struggles, Atlanta moves the football down the field and puts one in for seven. Seven nothing Atlanta thanks to the touchdown catch by Sean Jefferson his second of the season seven plays 89 yards but the key play was the 58 yard run by Maurice Smith and the kick is taken at the six yard line Curtis Jackson works it near side makes a nice cut and is dropped at the 25 yard line as teacher and pupil. The Atlanta this season, Trevor, has been uh, just dominating in the opening quarter. With that touchdown, they have now outscored their opponent 55 to 3 in the first quarter of play. You know why? Take a look at that there. <laughs> That's a guy who has earned that ball spot with a lot of experience, and it's the experience that he comes out in the opening quarter and takes over a game. Brady goes back to work. Patriots on the ground trying to pop it off the right side. Smith crashes in for a pickup of three up to the 29 yard line. Brookie, who's been very active in this opening quarter with another tackle. And look at the way Antoine Smith covered up that ball. There was no way in the world Brookie was going to be allowed to get it out. Bill Belichick. Pacing the sidelines down seven. Now they come back the other way. Sliding up to the 34 yard line. And again, Brooking making the tackle on Antoine Smith. And Wednesday on CBS, Vince Gill, Cheryl Crow, Tim McGraw, Brooks and Dunn, Willie Nelson, the Dixie Chicks, and more of the biggest acts in country music perform live at the Country Music Awards. That's Wednesday right here on CBS. Well, I hope Faith Hill is up for something. She is just absolutely delightful. I met her. She was just very gracious with her fans. I know you'll be tuning in, is what you're saying. Patriots into the backfield. Brady on the keeper as they were looking at third and short. This will be close. Travis Hall able to plug up the middle for Atlanta. Well, that's three runs in a row. Patriots are really getting back to basics and, and one thing they haven't had for a number of years is, is a dominating feature back and the closest they have right now is Antoine Smith Smith isn't a guy that's going to break a lot of big runs but he says he gets stronger as the game goes on if he gets lots of carries and he's been lobbying the coaches to give him more carries this first quarter so far he's had a lot he struggled in that first half against Denver last week only five carries for nine yards now Brady steps pump throws incomplete. David Patton was along the far sideline, but Buchanan was providing coverage. Yeah, Buchanan was all over Patton on that one. It was just pure man-to-man -man coverage, and Patton threw the best move he could, and he threw such a good move he fell down. Buchanan is going to have his leg in Patton's pants right here. That's how close he is. Look, he breaks, he turns around, he comes. Great coverage. So Ray Buchanan since 1997 24 picks that's the most in the National Football League they throw underneath to loosen things up a bit Patton picks up yardage to the 42 yard line Brooking has gone right to left up the middle you name it Keith Brooking has been there he's yeah. averaging 12 stops a game and Brooking tackling David Patton little David Patton in there is not a fair fight. I mean, they, they better not send Patton in there too often unless they clear Brooking first or they'll be without a receiver. Final seconds of the first quarter. Winding down. Atlanta's defense having their way in the first quarter. And that ends the first quarter with the score. Atlanta leading New England 7-0 will return to the Georgia Dome after this message. Start the second quarter here at the Georgia Dome. Tom Brady so far in this game, four of nine for 52 yards. Big play here, Trevor, as he looks at third and two. Back and Sean Blitz, eight men in the box. Brady sets, throws underneath, complete. First down and more to the 45-yard line. And it was Curtis Jackson who was able to sneak underneath. And Jackson, the second-year pro out of Texas. Tell you what I like about that play. Most of the passes of Tom Brady have gone to, to uh, Troy Brown 
and David Patton. Here you've got a third receiver he's getting involved, Curtis Jackson, not just in the game plan early, but also on a critical third and two. I like it that Brady is looking to other receivers right now. Well, you know what? And that equals poise. That equals poise. From the 45-yard line. And they spread it out. They throw inside. Kevin Falk, though it's a nice read by Atlanta. They're going to drop him for a one or two yard loss. Henri Crockett, who used to be Henry Crockett of Florida State, but went Henri, Henri, at when he decided to become a pro. What did Deion Sanders say about that? You know, Leroy goes, or Leroy goes to Leroy <laughs> when you become a pro. That's right. How about poise? Second season, there's Chris Chandler, 14. He's 24 years of age. He's been with one team. Chandler has been around this league only his sixth NFL start. And remember, he was on the practice squad not even that a year ago. He was a number four quarterback. Falk stumbled but regains his balance to the 36-yard line. Well, they wanted to run that screen pass to that side. They had man coverage. David Patton ran Ashley Ambrose deep, and they saw that the time before, but they couldn't get it completed. This time, they run the same direction, different way. He fakes it to the left side, goes back to his right. And then you see a nice block by number 65 to center, Damian Woody, but I like it that they came back two plays in a row to where they thought there was a soft spot, a play they thought would work. Now, another critical third and short. Bledsoe with the headsets looks on ninth play of this drive. Brady, Antoine Smith. Gonna be short. Boy, that time Antoine ran to darkness. There was a hole there, and he ran right into the back of his guard, Mike Compton. Oh, and he's frustrated. I think he knows that he did. Now, right here, is this four-down territory at this point in the game? You bet. Take a look at this. He's going to run right into the back of number 77. Think right there. Now, the safety, Chris Hudson, was coming up, but he can move Chris Hudson. And you know what? Four-down territory. That's right. Here they go. Patriots. Three for ten on fourth downs. Good. That and more. Good. You get a tough guy head coach like Bill Belichick. He says, okay, offensive line. Okay, 230-pound running back. If you can't get this two feet, then you're not worth being out there. And they respond <laughs> to that. Offensive linemen love it when you give them enough credit that you say, guys, I trust you. Because usually nobody says anything to them except, what do you want to have for lunch? Belichick is setting a tone with his big boys up front. Fresh downs for New England. Brady under center at the 34. Little pitch back. Flea flick, uh, flea flick there, and it didn't work. That, that play took a long time to develop, but you know what? Again, the corners of Atlanta had great coverage downfield. Well, they only sent two receivers out. The corners were back, but so were both safeties, Craig. They were in a cover two, meaning a very soft, deep zone coverage. And so Brady is going to hand off to Antoine Smith. They're supposed to draw up the safeties, but they're in a soft zone. They're supposed to be deep no matter what. And so as Brady's looking down the field, he's seeing both receivers double covered. Didn't expect that. Kearney was the first to come in and wrap him up. 12th play of this drive. Second down, a dart. Complete. Patton to the 19. Well, you talked about the poise of Brady, Craig. Wow. He gets sacked on the play before. The defense calls the perfect scheme to blow up the play that they had. And the next play, he stands in the pocket, drills the ball into zone coverage again, and makes a long completion to keep the chains moving. Trevor, there was, there's been much written and, uh, and talked about Brady's mobility, his arm strength. I'm Personally, what I've seen, this guy can throw the football. Yeah, and he doesn't stay down when you get him down. That's why oh. Smith on the pitch by the seam. Cuts outside, back inside to the two. What a tough run by Antoine Smith. Oh, give him credit there. He burst through that hole. You got to believe him when he says, hey, keep giving me the ball. He had six carries in the first quarter. Take a look at number 44, Mark Edwards, the fullback, right there. 44, bang! He hits Chris Draft, number 54, and that's what opens up the hole. Smith numbers, eight carries, 30 yards. A good number of cuts in there, too. Big man, he cut about six times on that run. First and goal, New England, 14th play, not this time. Cut down, maybe a loss of a yard, back to the three. 
See, this is where the Patriots are dangerous. A lot of people wrote them off before the season started as being sort of a weaker team, a team that you can look to as a victory on your schedule. But all of a sudden, they've beaten some very good teams. And here on the road now, Atlanta tried to get them down with that first touchdown. And New England's right back in their face. You cannot discount these guys. 15th play of this drive. Three wide out for lone back is Edwards. They push him back another yard to the five. I'll tell you, Atlanta is not discounting anything now. Sean Sueda and Keith Brooking, number 56, are going to come in. They're Sueda, 93, and here comes Brooking to finish him off. Boy, I tell you, if there was any discounting before, they're not doing it now. They're, they're really attacking this line of scrimmage. Sueda is a 300-pounder with good feet, able to drive him back. Third down and goal. The backfield is empty. Five wide outs. Tommy Patter to the corner. Touchdown! Kevin Fulk. What an outstanding play call. They take Kevin Falk as a running back. They split him out wide, very wide, so that Keith Brooking, the linebacker, has to cover him. Keith Brooking is never out that wide. He has no idea how to make a play on a fade route in the corner of the end zone because he never practices it. He has to do it here because of the empty backfield and the positioning of Falk as a wide receiver. Falk's got that football, his first touchdown receiving this season. Benetieri with the extra point to tie. Vinatieri now 18 of 19, and PATs were tied at seven. Brady, cool and calm, with the touchdown toss to Falk. Nine minutes left in the opening quarter. 16 plays, 75 yards. Falk with the four-yard touchdown. Brady, six of six on that drive. But Trevor, what was impressive? His poise that we talked about. He was three of eight before that six for six drive. Some rhythm again on the road. Jared Ball up the middle to the 30. And hey, everybody in New England, knock on wood, but I'm going to say it no interceptions. Now the two are talking. Bledsoe and Brady, 7 7. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Chrysler. Drive equals love. Next tell how business gets done. And by Pizza Hut, where every week this fall you can get one of our pizzas for an unbelievable price. Well, coming up on the next L Halftime Report, join Jim, Mike, Randy, and Jerry. All the scores, all the highlights, and the latest NFL news, plus a CBS News update, America on Guard. That's coming up next. 7-7 in Atlanta. Maurice Smith on the pitch, driven back. Will mark his progress to the original line of scrimmage. Roman Pfeiffer defeated the block of Bob Christian, number 44, was one of the best blocking fullbacks in the NFL. First two drives, six plays minus six yards. Last drive, seven. 89 and most of those were on two plays one yeah. long pass to Tony Martin one long run by Maurice Smith Second down 10 Chandler over the middle picked off Otis Smith Second pick of the season and he runs it back 17 yards, and boy, the, the momentum, the emotion has switched here at the Georgia Dome. It has done so because of scheme. Chandler thinks this is a two-deep zone. In a two-deep zone, Maurice Smith, or Otis Smith, number 45, is not there. In a two-deep zone, Otis Smith lets him go and passes him off to the safety. Instead, it's a man coverage, which they have not shown very much of the last several games, and they got inside Chris Chandler's head on that play. That caused the interception. You know, he's the oldest Patriot, just uh, 36 years young. He turned October 22nd. He can still motor on the ground. And boy, laying that helmet. My, 
Oh, my. What a pop Antoine Smith delivered. And he delivered it with another tackler down around his legs. And flag another is flag. down. My goodness. Yeah, flag is down inside the 20. We'll get the call from Dick Hantek. Yeah, he's calling it on the Patriots. Again, neither team can, can maintain momentum for more than about three plays. Tripping. Offense. Number 85. Ten yard penalty. Repeat the down. First down. That's tight end Jermaine Wiggins. Yeah, yeah, he gets his he gets his left leg up in the air. That's a leg whip if he hits him hard with it. A leg whip is illegal as well. Since he just stuck it up in the air and tried to trip, it's still a penalty. Craig, they do that because you can injure people. If you hit him hard with your leg, you can hurt the defender. If you just stick it up there, the defender can break your leg. Wiggins, second year pro out of Georgia. Got the start today for the injured uh, Rod Rutgers down an ankle. Flags again, fingers pointing each way. Kearney was quick off the ball for Atlanta. Ball start, offense, number 85, you know, hey, five-yard penalty, still first down. I'll tell you what, one more penalty for Jermaine. That's two in a row. That's two, one more, and all the fans are going to throw their hats out onto the stadium floor. That'll make it a hat trick. Trevor, you played the line throughout your 12-year NFL career, that, that offensive that offensive line, and you can sell some emotions boiling up right now, a lot of, a lot of finger pointing. You've been through that. Well, finger pointing because you got guys hitting each other in the mouth, and after a while, you take that personal. Brady checks off, throws to the flat on the far side, and the catch by Smith, but not much after that. Crockett on coverage for Atlanta. Yeah, see, that's the problem. It's second and 25 right now because of two consecutive penalties on the tight end, Jermaine Wiggins, and he's better than that. You know, that, that he, he, he's better than that. But look what it did to his team. They get the big play that gets them the ball down in scoring position, and right now they have third, or check that, second and 25. Pat in motion. Brady sets and fires, and Pat and Reed makes a tough catch and well he took a shot to the midsection around the 31 yard line by Ray Buchanan but yet another, another flag, flag down. down at the 46 yard line holding oh my goodness they're saying that's illegal hand to the face a lot of times an offensive lineman he'll get his hand up under the chin strap of a defensive pass rusher to stop his charge it looks like they're going to call that it negates illegal hand Offense, offense, number 76, hands to the face. Ten-yard penalty, repeat the down, second down. That's, Holy smokes. That's Grant Williams who starts at left tackle today for uh, Mike Light, Matt Light. 20, uh, 25 yards and penalties on this drive. Yeah, his left arm gets the face mask, and then he pulls it down, but that's enough. And that's a good call by the official, but the killer here is, holy smokes, they had a chance to go down there with some momentum and score, and look where they are now. Second and 35. Brady throws far sideline, little pitch and catch, and it's brought down by Smith up to the 41 yard line. Hit by Chris Graff, the outside linebacker, who's missed a, nearly a month with a toe injury. But you know, people say toe. Trevor, come on. No. You, know, you know, turf toe. I used to. Yeah, I used to think the turf toe. I thought they were just sort of low tolerance for pain until I got one. And then let me tell you, it is excruciating. Third down at 25. No, How about a third down in 30? <laughs> How about another flag? Oh. Ball start. Offense number 65. Five-yard penalty. That, still third down. You know, I'm thinking to myself, now, now Brady's been in the lineup long enough that, that they know the case. I mean, this isn't like some new quarterback now. No, the problem is we're in a dome, and he's going to pull. See, Woody, 65, is normally the center. He was a left guard because they're in the shotgun formation, and he can't snap shotgun. Right guard, or check that, left guard Mike Compton goes into center. So he's not used to playing guard and jump. Third and 30. Brady, pressure from behind, throws complete around the 30-yard line to Wiggins, the tight end. 
Now this is going to be about a 47 yard field goal attempt. But again it's because of those penalties in this drive they had 30 yards of penalties this drive alone. Vinatieri 22 of 22 field goals 21 of 21 extra points all time in dome stadiums. This will test his leg. They're going to mark this down just inside the 38 yard line. So call it 47. Good kick. Splits the uprights. So Vinatieri keeps that dome streak alive. 10-7. New England. Four twenty six before the half New England has come back with ten unanswered points and officially it was a forty eight yard field goal off the foot of Vinatieri. How about that four plays minus four yards. Well, the flags were flying but yet they get the uh, the big boot for Vinatieri. All four guys that got penalties ought to buy him dinner consecutive days this week. Short kick at the six. Derek Vaughn. Vaughn at the 20, 25, 30. Vaughn. Vaughn at the 50. Vaughn at the 35 yard line. Chased out by Vinatieri. Boy, they sent Tim Dwight to San Diego as part of the, the trade of draft choices to be able to draft Michael Vick. Tim Dwight was their returner. Take a look at Vaughn. The blocking is spectacular. What's key here is that guys throw their block at the time that he gets there. It's hard to sustain a special teams block. When you see a return like this up the middle, it's usually because he arrives a split second before or after the blocks are thrown. And that's what happened on that return. 4-13 left before the half. First and 10. Falcons with the 58-yard return in good field position. Smith, the lone back Chandler, three step drop, ball batted up in the air and nearly pulled down and dropped. Almost a miracle catch by Jefferson, number 84. I think Jefferson was trying just to bat that thing down. He had Odell Smith right in his back, and really better to better to survive for second down and get that thing out of the air. But I'll tell you what, that kickoff return was just critical. Here we go, Jefferson. This ball's going to go up. Odell Smith is right there. Jefferson mostly is just going to try to get this thing onto the ground. But I tell you, following a score from New England, to answer it with a kickoff return like that is, is a great play for Atlanta. Crumpler, the rookie tight end in motion. Chandler rolling out, chased and dropped. Richard Seymour, the rookie from Georgia. Oh, they are so high on this young man. Coming off some hamstring problems, he was motoring. He was more he replaces some of those guys they lost. Chad Eaton. Take a look at 93. He's just going to come right through, and, and he gets by center Todd McClure before McClure realizes that the guard's not there to help him. Good explosion and quickness off the ball. First sack of his pro career. Number one pick out of Georgia. 6'6", 305. That's your size, Trev. Uh, actually, a little smaller than me. <laughs> Thanks for mentioning it. Uh, not my pleasure. Haven't seen a flag in a minute or two. Yeah, well, <laughs> a minute or two. That's about right. I think they need to have umbrellas down there. There's three flags on the ground right now. It's third and 16. It's probably going to be a false start unless the defense drew him off. But Atlanta did jump. The question will be who jumped first. Ball start, offense number 71, five yard penalty, still third down. That's Travis Claridge, and I guess uh, Atlanta figures that uh, since since New England had to play third and very long in that last drive, they'll return the favor. Now instead of third and 16, which is bad enough, it's third and 21. Thank you very much. Nine flags so far combined for 70 yards in this first half, and still just under three and a half minutes to go. You know, the, the great return basically put Atlanta looking right at three before the half. And now the flags have, have pushed him back almost to midfield. Yeah, flags in a sack. Chandler rolling 
to his left. Steps, fires, and at the last second, Otis Smith able to put a hand out to knock it away. 12-year pro out of Missouri. He had safety help behind him. Two receivers went up the left sideline. There were three guys to cover. And so Otis Smith knew there was a safety back there, so he was able to break on that route. He knows the deep part is covered for him, so as soon as Terrence Mathis breaks, he breaks. Chris Moore into punt. Troy Brown awaits. Fair catch at the 11. And Craig, a wasted return. What a spectacular return to follow a New England score to let go completely to waste because of a penalty. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Viagra. Ask your doctor if Viagra is right for you. And by Gateway, where you've got a friend in the business. For the best NFL coverage on the net, including expert analysis and live scoreboards, go to cbs.sportsline.com or AOL keyword CBS Sportsline. Boy, Atlanta's defense so tough against the run. 14 attempts by New England, Trevor, for 36 yards. This defense has held four of the last six opponents under 100 yards rushing. Falk is taken down by the ankles. Well, Craig, you talk about holding the holding opponents' rushing yardage down. That's one of the reasons they throw those little screens and flare passes. They'll throw them to the running backs. They'll throw them also to the wide receivers, partially to replace the running game. They know how hard it is to run up inside against Atlanta, so they replace those little three, four, and five-yard gainers with quick passes to the outside. Interesting timeout. They took the timeout. They have two remaining, and remember, the clock will stop again at the two-minute warning. Well, they're taking that timeout because they think their defense can stop the Patriots here and take a punt and have good field position to get down for at least a field goal. Dan Reeves on the sideline discussing strategy there with his quarterback, Chris Chandler. Here's a comparison today. Youth against experience. 120 yards, 13 of 18 from Brady. Chandler, 2 of 8. And score only three-point difference. That's impressive. Brady has hit his last 10 straight passes. Make it 11. Mark Edwards on the dump off to the 23. And a first down. Chris Draft made the tackle from behind. An interesting no timeout from Atlanta at that point. The clock runs 227. You know, one thing about Brady is that he shares the wealth. I mean, he's going to go to Wiggins. He goes to Patton. You saw him go to Cur uh, Curtis Jackson. He'll throw to Falk. He just goes to Edwards. Seven different receivers in this game in the first half. And they needed to do that because teams are, are stacking up on Brown and Patton, and where he really needs to go is to the tight ends. Wiggins is going to be, uh, he's been the, the forgotten man in this offense, and they've got to get more balls to Wiggins in order to free up those wide receivers on the outside. Two-minute warning. 10-7, Patriots up by three on the road. Well, stay tuned. Next Hill Halftime Report straight ahead. Jim, Mike, Randy, Jerry, they've got all the scores and highlights and the latest NFL news, plus a CBS News update, America on Guard. That's coming up in just a few minutes. Two minutes left in the opening half. Brady steps up, throws incomplete. Well, this is one of the tests of a young quarterback. If you look at Don Blackman, defensive coordinator for Atlanta, on the field instead of up in the booth like most defensive coordinators so he can see the eyes of his players, see how they feel about things, see who is spooked and who is ready to go. And that way he adjusts what he calls based on how he knows they're feeling. Boy, Blackman has uh, Patriot blood running through and played linebacker 81 through 87. Play action. Brady steps, throws, complete! Troy Brown made the catch. And it was some great blanket coverage. A 25-yard pickup. Conrad Hamilton, number 24, on coverage. Timeout. We'll be back. 
access to NFL.com now on America Online. Get game day coverage with live scoring updates and exclusive post-game features. Hey, listen, great job, fellas. Excellent job. Every Sunday on NFL.com and America Online keyword NFL.com. For 36 years, NFL Films has brought you the best in football. Now, access NFL Films TV online at NFL.com. A minute 39 remaining. How about this in this quarter, Trevor? New England was seven first downs. The Falcons, zero. Moving the football. And Brady continues to impress. Again, complete to the 45-yard line. Well, now that they've got to hustle up now because minute 30 to go, two timeouts. They can burn one timeout, but they need to save the last one for a last-second field goal if they don't get any closer. 16 of 22 for 162 yards, and a flag comes down. And does Tom Brady use a hard count there? There's a lot of veteran quarterbacks mm -hmm. who wouldn't use a hard count there. When our talks with Brady, I was impressed. You know, neutral zone infraction, defense number 75, five yard penalty, first down. First down, New England. Going back to Brady, we, we talk a lot about poise, but you know, he says, I've been through a lot of this talk and the pressure. Don't forget, I had to wait my turn in Michigan behind a guy named Greasy. Brian Greasy. He's done a great job of spreading this ball around. Right now, Atlanta can't key on anybody. From the shotgun, low snap. He steps and throws near sideline. Out of knee is caught by Patton. And out of bounds, stops the clock at the 25 yard line with 1.12 left before the half. And Ray Buchanan arguing his uh, case. 15 yard pickup. Well, you know, Ray Buchanan had pretty good coverage that time, but he had absolutely no safety help because Tom Brady had already completed passes to eight different guys. So they couldn't say, well, Patton's the main target. Let's double the guy and roll coverage to him. So if Buchanan was by himself, Brady found it. Three wideouts, top of your screen. Again from the gun, Brady sets, throws. Out of bounds, but what a grab. What a grab. Charles Johnson, wow. And Ray Buchanan has got to feel like Tom Brady, the, the young up-and-coming youngster, doesn't respect him. Brady is attacking Ray Buchanan. Perfect pass. He must be bobbling this thing as he goes, eh, no, nope, his right foot didn't get down. But what, it was a great effort. But if, if I'm Ray Buchanan, I'm thinking, you know, this young pup quarterback thinks I can't play. Second down. And they mix it up with a run. Atlanta doesn't bite. There they go. Two timeouts left. Under a minute to go now. Once again, they're starting to run out of opportunities to, to have short gains in the middle of the field here. They can burn one timeout and save the last one for the field goal. And now they're just letting the clock run. And they've got the football in the middle of the field at the 23-yard line. I guess they're figuring third down. We're going to throw it into the end zone here, or we'll kick the field goal. Patriots on the day, five of nine on third down conversions. Again, the four wide out set. Brady steps up in the pocket, throws, and reaching out inside the 15 is Kevin Falk, and they'll use the timeout. That stops the clock with 21 ticks left, and Brooking again on the tackle for Atlanta. 10-7 New England. They want more. 21 ticks left before half. Uh, during that quick timeout, the officials did bring the sticks over to measure and the first down by inches just inside the 15-yard line. Yeah, that's not even inches. That's, uh, that's a link. Yeah, that would be a, a whisker. <laughs> How about one of your, you know, just a thumb. A thumb well, my thumb. <laughs> your thumb, that's... That's, that's yeah. okay. I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> Brady throws wide open, touchdown New England. Mark Edwards walked in. And there's Tom Brady finding receivers all over the field. Atlanta has no idea where to look. 
That's the fullback. There, when everybody else deep into the end zone, you can see number 44, Mark Edwards. He's uncovered because everybody else is run off into the end zone. They sent out five different receivers on that play. Edwards was the fifth one Atlanta was looking at. Extra point to come. Snap is down, the kick is away, and it's good. Edwards with his first touchdown reception. And how about Tom Brady? Two-minute drill with 15 seconds to go on the road in a dome, takes it down against a fine defense, scores a touchdown. Does that build confidence? So sitting across the desk from him last night, Trevor, I got all sorts of vibes. I'm so, I mean, this young guy just has a great way of explaining his position, the pressure he feels in a large market, all that's been said, all that's been written, all about Drew Bledsoe, when and if he comes back this season, and handling that pressure. And when we asked him if he thought Atlanta would come after him after the fourth quarter of four interceptions last week, and he said, you know, I hope they do, because it gives me a chance to go over the top. What a second quarter. 158 yards, two touchdowns, and what impresses me more than anything else is that the second of those two touchdowns came on a two-minute drill on the road in the dome yeah. against a tough defense. You, you can't overstate how hard that is to do. Here, here's the great story. He said, you know what? I've been nobody, really, for the last year and a half since coming out of Michigan just doing my own thing. All of a sudden, I go back to my same grocery store. The guy looks at me with a gallon of milk in my hand saying, hey, uh, aren't you a football player? Aren't you Tom Brady? Yes, indeed, I am. Things change overnight. This guy's dangerous. Vaughn out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Well, now there's nine seconds to go, and at the 41-yard line, Atlanta has got two timeouts left. Chandler has got the wide receivers to do what Brady just did, spread the field, get down into field goal range. This is a two-play game right now. They can throw the ball once, call timeout fast, and still have two seconds to go. Jay Feely on field goal departments uh, coming in 11 of 12 on the season. And don't forget, he's hit one from 55. So Chandler with two timeouts remaining, but just nine seconds on the clock. Well, what a second quarter. Very quiet in the Georgia Dome. Three wide out set from the gun. Chandler steps up, throws across the middle at the 40. They're going to whistle for a timeout. And two seconds to go. Now, at this point, this is too far for a field goal. This would be a 57-yard field goal from here, 58. You know what? I still, feel he's still going to come in. He's going to try it then. Boy, I tell you, that's a long ways. Uh, he hit, uh, as I mentioned, from 55 against Arizona. Well, this one's going to be about 58. Trevor, you, you, you long snap. You've been in this position before. Talk about dome versus outside conditions. Long snapping is great because the weather's perfect. The problem with kicking off of, of any dome or any conditions here is that this ball is going to have to get drilled out low. So the key is for the, the tackle guard center guard tackle interior line of Atlanta's field goal protection team, they can't get pushed back. Because if they do, the ball's coming out low and it'll likely get knocked down. Also, it's on the paint of the Falcon at midfield. Officially, this will be from 58. Jay Feely, high snap. It came out low and it stays low. Yeah. Short, and we've played two quarters at the Georgia Dome. Seventeen unanswered points by New England, and that ends the first half of play. New England 17-7 over Atlanta. Jim Nance will be along from New York with the Nextel halftime report after this message and a word from your local station. Tom Brady and the Patriots up by 10 at the half. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League will continue after this word from your local station. At the Georgia Dome, Patriots by 10 over Atlanta. Craig Bowler Jack back along with Trevor Maddich. 
Tom Brady all in the second uh, quarter after, though, a very impressive start by Atlanta. Chris Chandler, we thought we'd see a lot of passing. We've had it. Chris Chandler, the veteran quarterback, opens up the scoring with a touchdown, hits Sean Jefferson. But what's impressive is after Chandler and Jefferson connect here is what the, the youngster Tom Brady does. He comes back and hits two touchdown passes in the second quarter. The first one to Kevin Falk, number 33, on the left side of the field. The Atlanta Falcons were not ready for that kind of a play to be called. And then the next one to his fullback. Mark Edwards on the right side of the field. Once again, Atlanta not ready for Tom Brady to be able to dig that deep down into his progression. Brady connecting with eight different receivers in that first half of play. Benateri will kick away. New England will start the third quarter up 17-7. They were down 7-0 in the first. Short kick. Vaughn at the 12. Vaughn at the 30. Vaughn at the 35. And Derek Vaughn rumbles his way to the 38-yard line. Trevor, we look at the first half numbers, passing yards. Brady came on strong in that second quarter, finished with 194, while Chandler with 39 passing yards. And look at the time of possession. Wow. You wonder why Chandler doesn't have the yards. He hasn't had the ball. Chandler under center. Patriots showing blitz. Bruski trying to fill one of the gaps. Falcons start on the ground and well, those pads pop as Maurice Smith off the right side picks up a couple to the 42. Well, they're trying to get the running game established because that's what's going to open up the passing game. Chandler wants to get more passing yards, but it comes off of the running game. It's cliche to say, but Atlanta really is tied to that precept. Boy, Maurice Smith, 58 yards on the ground today. The other team plays of 19 combining for 52 yards. I mean, it's, it's Maurice Smith has outgained the rest of the Falcons all by his lonesome. Second down, a little flip to the flat. And a collision. Bob Christian, who normally is that power blocker back who has been around and helped Jamal Anderson with those 1,000-yard seasons with his 12th reception of the season. I mean, he's, he's the kind of guy as a pass receiver is like a nutcracker. When everything's too tough everywhere else, you put him in and have him loosen up the defense a bit with a reception. And so when they throw to Bob Christian, it's because nobody else is breaking free. First down at the 49 of New England. Mathis in motion. A delay draw to Smith, and he bounces down to the 45-yard line. You know, Maurice Smith... Great story. Well, Maurice Smith is a great story, but he ran into the defensive game plan of New England here. Remember that in games past, they've had a soft two-deep zone. Well, here they start with a two-deep zone, and there, this safety was back here. Instead, he came up, and now there's only one safety deep in the middle. There's eight guys up to stop the run, and that's what they've been doing. Second down, Mathis in motion, quick throw to Mathis near side. Red nicely eaten up by lawyer Malloy. Malloy, a six-year pro out of Washington, two-time pro bowler back in 98, 99. But now why is Malloy up there to make that tackle? He's up there because normally he's back in the two-deep zone. And that now they rotate him up late. They'd start with a two-deep look. They rotate him up late. As we look at defensive coordinator Romeo Cornell, who's done a great job of altering the game plan this week and getting Malloy up to the line of scrimmage, where he is now. Third down and eight. You heard Chandler barking, and he is taken down hard. At the 48, Willie McGinnis. Now, this time, Craig, they did just the opposite. They started out in a one-deep zone look, and then Malloy backed off from the line of scrimmage into a two-deep look. Malloy is here. He started here, and he backs out. So now it's a two-deep look, 
and when Chandler goes back, he sees more safeties than what he saw in his initial read. When he came to the line of scrimmage, there was one safety back there. They moved late to where there are two. Chris Moore back at his own 35-yard line to punt. Troy Brown awaits. Brown pedals back at the five. Oh, look at that special team coverage by the guys in black. Falcons all over him. Why is he catching the ball at the five? Inside the ten, he's supposed to let it go. 46 yards, boot, and a one-yard return. You're right. We'll be back. New England and Atlanta, 17-7 Patriots. Two teams struggled a year ago, finished on the bottom of the pile. Now trying to work their way up. Coming up is Cleveland at Chicago, Kansas City at San Diego. Those teams also trying to rise back up from the ashes to the top. Look at that. Chicago, 5-1. San Diego with Flutie, 5-2. Cleveland with Butch Davis, 4-2, and two. Arizona, 2-4, two and four. Atlanta, 3-3, three and three. New England, 3-4. and four. You know what? None of those. The Look at top that. three in last place last year at this time. Now they're either first or second, and we got them coming up next. Parity in the National Football League. Whoa! Oh! Oh, boy. Boy, Antoine Smith. Craig, this is something to look for. Whenever you see... A hit happens and a guy's head snaps back. That's how you that's how you define a big hit. And Antoine Smith's head, just watch nothing but Antoine Smith's head as he comes in. Nothing but his head. Whoa, see it? You can see it snap back there. That that's a big hit. That ball popped out of there as you saw on the replay. Clock running. Coming up on ten and a half minutes left. Third down and five. Brady. Set throws on the fingertips and trying to crawl for the first down is Troy Brown. Right now, Troy Brown is on the ground, kneeling down with the official, trying to lobby his case that he actually caught the thing. This is a terrific route. It's man coverage. He starts in, loops back, and comes back out against actually Ambrose. And Brady lays that ball way out where only Troy Brown can catch it. But, I, you know, that was nothing but a seven-on-seven -seven drill. Man for man, man coverage, a man-type route, and Troy Brown wins. Out come the sticks. Ooh, that close. That's, that's the length of uh, both of our thumbs together, I think. <laughs> Good effort by Troy Brown. Last week against the Broncos, nine catches, had 86 yards with a touchdown. So Ken Walter will come in to punt. Now he's done a good job in relief of, of uh, Lee Johnson. Lee John I played with him at BYU, and I just forgot his name. How about that? Lee Johnson. Uh, but today, in this dome, in perfect weather, he's really struggled to get any distance on his kicks. He mentioned Lee Johnson, 17 years in this league, released back in mid-October. All-time leader in punts yeah. and punt yards, over 50,000 yards of punting, uh, punting yards. Long snap count, the left footer. Good hang time, fair catch at the 43-yard line. So a timeout after the 39-yard boot. We'll be back. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by GMC. From professional-grade people come professional-grade trucks. Nike. And by CDW. Computing solutions built for business. Welcome back to Atlanta. Here's a question. Who's the best kick punt return over the last 10 years? Desmond Howard, Dave Meggett, Eric Metcalf, Glenn Milburn, Brian Mitchell. Just log on, catch your vote at NFL.com. I vote Brian Mitchell. I'm not going to argue much with you. Watch out! Got it away, incomplete. 
Oh, Chandler at the last second able to get the ball away, but bringing the steam was Otis Smith. And that's that aggressive defense. That's what Romeo Cornell is doing here that he wasn't doing over the course of the last bit as we look at Otis Smith. But he's going to come way from here. Watch Chandler. Chandler has no clue that Otis Smith is coming. Not an idea. You know why? Because he read the defense, and what he read was what New England has done in the past, which is, hey, no problem. Well, guess what? They changed the program. Now there's a problem. And this is one of the reasons that the Falcons only have seven points. Chandler able to bounce up quickly. Otis Smith, however, slow off the field. As I mentioned, he's the oldest Patriot, 36 years young, and still putting a putting the helmet down. He put the helmet down. That's a couple. That's a lot of years of experience. Look at that. First six games to sack ten times. Today four because they're coming from unexpected places. Second down and ten. Chandler, far sideline, shedding a tackler and picking up big yards. Algie Crumpler, the rookie tight end from North Carolina. Well, there's Algie Crumpler. He had a huge game against the Saints two weeks ago. They put him all the way out in a wide receiver position. Both tight ends are out there. And when Algie catches the ball out there, he breaks the tackle of the strong safety and runs over the cornerback. First reception by a Falcon tight end. 6-2-2-62 on the clock. They timed him in the 40 at 4-9-2. Yeah, that's a lot of momentum. That's run through a wall momentum. Chandler again throws. Crumpler swings out of bounds at the 37-yard line. You know, one major player missing from this New England defense is the linebacker, Brian Cox, the three-time Pro Bowler. Controversial. Broke a leg last week against Denver. Dan Neal fined 15,000 for that for that hit. And you know what? That's a misfire by the NFL. It's unfortunate that Cox is out. It's unfortunate not just for the team, but for the league that a player of his stature is not on the field. But Dan Neal absolutely should not have been fined at all for that. Maybe 15-yard penalty, but not a fine. It was clean. Second down on the ground. Maurice Smith to the first down marker and when I when I say clean if you look at Willie McGinnis clean in that Dan Neal Denver's guard that broke the allegedly broke the leg of Brian Cox what was clean was his intent he didn't mean to break his leg he went out on a block he got beat he lunged at the last second and to avoid the lunge Cox jumped and when he came down he came down funny and broke his leg but intent is what's required for a $15,000 fine, and it was clear in watching the coach's game film, there was no way there was intent. Third down and short. Maurice Smith, first down. The hard way. Yeah, the hard Punishing way. hit That's around right. the 32-yard line. That's right. No trickiness in here. Maurice Smith, and look at him. He's all geared up like a guy that's in a physical battle will get. Look at the line surge. They're just going to go straight forward. Nobody pulls. It's bowl forward to get that first down. And I'll tell you, they're about five yards away from field goal range right now. Roman Pfeiffer, the outside backer, put a big hit on Mo Smith. Ten carries for 76 yards. That's pretty good for your uh, your per carry average. Christian in motion. Chandler throws incomplete on his hands and off. You know, that's a lot harder catch to make than you'd think. Chandler's frustrated. They're down here in field goal range. That, that, that's a difficult catch. you got to make it. But it's a weird angle that the ball comes in. The problem with it now is it leaves you at second and ten. This team is down 17-7. to seven. The third quarter is halfway gone. There's not many drives they can waste down here. He turns his head. He sees the ball. But, again, it's a weird angle. But, again, this is a critical drive for Atlanta right now. Down 10 points at this part of the game with New England's defense playing as well as it is. Maurice Smith. Long back. Oh, the fingertips incomplete. Reggie Kelly, the tight end. Well, it, 
Chris Chandler is clearly trying to do what Tom Brady successfully did in the first half, find alternative receivers. He threw to one tight end, Algie Crumpler. Now he goes back to Reggie Kelly, the other tight end, on the opposite side of the field. The tight ends were quiet in the first half of this game after having a, a huge impact against the Saints two weeks ago. And you can tell that Chandler is trying to get him involved. But now, third and ten, now they've got to get five yards to have their field goal attempt. 7.06 remaining third quarter. Kozlowski in motion, number 85, a throw incomplete. Terrence Mathis, the intended receiver, no flag. A bit of a collision around the 17-yard line. And Ty Law, the left corner, was cover man for New England. Well, I tell you, that, that, that's rough. Because, again, at this point of the game, they are going to go for the field goal. This is going to be a 50-yard field goal. After a 58-yarder that, that Jay Feely tried at the end of the first half, they're really putting him out on an island now because when they get opportunities to get into better field goal range, they're misfiring. Feely's longest is a 55 on the year. This will be from 50 yards. Good snap, good hole, kick is away. It has distance, but it's wide to the left. Yeah, that's a tough thing to ask a field goal kicker to do. A real tough thing. But wide it's the, left. It's the offense's fault. You'd say the kicker's wide left there? No, the offense is wide left because if that ball, if that ball is 15 yards closer, it's not wide left. One more time. Close, but yet New England still on top by 10. Tonight on 60 Minutes, whether he was sweet-talking Jackie Kennedy or dealing with matters of state, Lyndon Johnson's private phone calls were all secretly recorded. And guess who has the tapes? Find out 60 Minutes tonight on CBS. Brady under pressure. Well, that ball was caught. My name's Trevor Maddich. Well, I'll tell you, <laughs> it hit the it hit the turf around the 41. I'll tell you what else hit the turf around 10 yards behind that was Tom Brady. Let's look at Travis Hall. Problem is there were two defensive linemen that got there at the same time. Travis Hall hit Brady, and the other D lineman hit Travis Hall. Dan Reeves with photos from above. To the technology that's in this game today, Trevor, it, it's amazing. Well, the technology, yeah, what they're doing now, I mean, he was talking about the complexity of the offense, Dan Reeve was, and how now you can at least signal in with the radio headset, whereas in the past you had to signal in by hand, all those complex things. Tra you know, Travis Hall out of Brigham Young. Most tackles by an interior lineman in this league since 96 with 461. Well, they're going to converge on Brady. Look at number 98, Travis Hall. You know, it's hard to see what happened. It almost seems like he may have landed with somebody's knee in his rib. He's holding his ribs. And, I, and I'll tell you, when it comes to pain, Craig, broken rib pain is its own kind of problem. I don't know if he has a broken rib. He's holding his rib. But even a big, huge guy like that, when you get that kind of pain, you got to come out and sit down and reset because it's very sharp, a sharp, sharp pain. Travis Hall to the sideline, second down and 10 for New England. Quick throw, far side, pitch and catch, Troy Brown. And they're going to keep the clock running at the 44, come up the 45 yard line. Well, that was a, a fortunate bounce. Ray Buchanan got the ball out of there, but it bounced right back up into Troy Brown's hands. 34, Ray Buchanan is going to read this thing, come right up, and strip the ball from Troy Brown, but then take a look at where the ball bounces. Point right back up into his hand on the second bounce. Now, how's that for living right? Scores around the league. Incomplete. Got a handout was Ray Buchanan. Yeah, second time in a row this drive, the young pup quarterback Tom Brady goes after the veteran Ray Buchanan. I mean, Ray Buchanan right now is being challenged by Tom Brady. This time he's up to the task. Very tight coverage, and Brady throws it in there anyway. He's able to get his hand around and knock it down. 
But Brady wanted a flag. He thought that that was pass interference. I don't think so. Walter will punt. His three punts averaging just under 29 yards a kick. Takes a bounce and hit a Patriot. They try to throw it back into play and they will down it at the one. And the boos are coming out of this crowd. Touchback is what the Falcon fans want. Now the signal will come. 55 yard kick. Time out at the Georgia Dome. 5.55 to go on the third. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Circuit City. We know how you feel. That's why we're here. Circuit City, we're with you. And by Applebee's Neighborhood Grill and Bar. Eating good in the neighborhood. Applebee's. Monday on CBS, a hospital visit brings the King of Queens face to face with the world's most annoying patient. Chris Elliott guest stars in an all new King of Queens Monday right here on CBS. Trevor, since the first quarter, Falcons and Chris Chandler just have not been on the same page. No, they haven't. Creating a touchback situation. Persons in Atlanta on the 20 yard line. All right, there's Dick Antak. As we went to break, there was some confusion, but yes, the ball did go bound into the end zone, touchback 20 yard line, first and 10. Yeah, to Bucky Jones had established contact with his feet beyond the goal line into the end zone, and therefore, when he touched the ball, it was immediately a touchback. Patriots. Eight men in the box are bringing heat. Mo Smith nearly broke a tackle but stumbles up around the 20 he gains maybe a half a yard. Now, Trevor you talked about uh, about Brian Cox and there was a lot of talk after that game about Dan Neal Cox was very vocal about to repay retribution but yet uh, he did send in an apology saying after talking to family and friends he realizes that he's not out to try to hurt anybody because everybody's got to pay the bills and take care of family yeah, and a few years ago he would have tried to go out to hurt him but he's grown up and matured and has a lot of emotion when you're sitting on the field injured Chandler the pump fake off the hands of Crumpler flag down they're trying to get the tight ends involved they're almost forcing it to him but this time Holding defense number 26 five yard penalty first down this time it works out for him Matt Stevens is the backup free safety he goes to Crumpler again a pump fake and usually what happens there is take a look at Stevens he bites on the pump fake Crumpler goes by him and he grabs him so it's not a touchdown of the bad things that could have happened there that was the better of the bad choices Matt Stevens Six year pro out of Appalachian State. Boy, now six flags on the Falcons, five for New England. But it's only a five yard penalty and a first down, so it's not bad for New England. From the 25 yard line, Chandler throws high and complete. Let's go to New York City. Update on the Colts, Colts and Bills. Here's Jim Nance. Jim. All right, Craig, you may be wondering how is life without Edron James this week for the Colts? James out with a knee injury. His replacement, Dominique Rhodes, 54 yards rushing and this touchdown for the 17-point lead. Let's go back down to Atlanta to Craig and Travis. Thank you, Jim. Colts trying to find some answers. Beat up, but yet up 24-7. Chandler under center his numbers today seven of 18 interception 81 yards and a touchdown sets and throws a little sidearm and a, a ball that Terrence Mathis would like to have back this crowd getting a little restless on some sloppy play by Atlanta and it's not all Chris Chandler's fault but the crowd is now chanting we want Vic we want Vic Michael Vic and you know what? Chris Chandler hears it. Number one pick, Virginia Tech. 4 3 3 speed in the 40, folks. Chandler under a heavy rush. Down he goes. 
for the, the Patriots. I tell you, emotional, the, the level of emotion with this team from first quarter through the second and the third, they have just taken it to another level. They have really tried some different blitz packages. They have. This is the same blitz that Otis Smith got him with before. They left one safety deep instead of two, brought the other safety on a blitz, and Chandler didn't see him coming. The rest of the protection broke down as well. Troy Brown at the 44. Brown spins to midfield and reaches to the 49-yard line. Brian Kozlowski made the special teams tackle. 17-7, New England. Next weekend, join the Shark and many of the tour's top players, including John Daly, Jesper Parnovic, Lee Jansen, Corey Pavin, Raymond Floyd at the Franklin Templeton Shootout. For more golf coverage, go to cbs.sportsline.com or AOL keyword CBS Sportsline. Fumble on the deck, picked up, Atlanta has it. Ashley Ambrose. And maybe that puts uh, the spark back in the Falcons. And it puts a big damper on New England. Here we go again, Itis. They don't have a feature back because none of their backs hold on to the ball. That's Mark Edwards, free agent in this year. Normally sure-handed, although he doesn't carry the ball a lot. The exchange was a bit bobbled, and he wasn't able to get control. Ashley Ambrose takes advantage. What a swing in this game after New England's defense absolutely stifles Chris Chandler and Atlanta in the offense of the Falcons. They got the ball right back. As Chandler trotted to the huddle, the boos began to erupt. And, of course, Michael Vick, the number one pick on the bench, running from the veteran in New England. Not having anything to do with that ground game today as Brandon Mitchell, 96, busted through from the nose. Yeah, well, this is why you can't outlaw cut blocking in there. The left guard, uh, it was Garza. Here we go. He comes in like this and gets beat. When he goes high, he can't make the block. He's got to go low and cut him down because Mitchell's on the play side. Garza doesn't have a chance to make that block unless he can cut it. That's why you have to make it legal to cut inside or keep it legal to cut inside. Backfield's empty. Five wide receivers. Chandler, no protection and trouble. And now the booze you can hear it here at the Georgia Dome. Anthony Pleasant was the first to bring the heat from the right side and and Chandler's slow getting Very up. Very slow. There's Michael Vick. Yeah, at this point, the protection is breaking down so badly. Chandler, who's not nifty, breaks away from number 54. That's Bruski and runs into a defensive lineman. That's Anthony Pleasant. And that's not a guy that can take that many hits. If the protection is going to break down that badly, then Michael Vick is going to have to come in for the health sake of Chris Chandler. Well, that's uh, that's definitely a struggle. Six sacks. Chandler's been on his back plenty today. Again, they spread the field. Chandler sling arms underneath the, the coverage, and it's complete to Tony Martin, close to a first down at the 44-43 yard line. Pfeiffer and Malloy teamed up to make the hit. And that was a big third down, third and 17. They've got a punt, and Chandler looks like a man who has been pounded. They've got to either protect him or get him out of there. Here he stands in and delivers the ball, and now look at it. It's like, That's you know, grimace. what's hurting? And he leans. He's listening to Port. Looks like his right shoulder might have taken a pounding. Troy Brown awaits the punt. Takes a bounce at the three. Touchback, and they'll bring it back to the 20. A 43-yard kick. And Chandler's being looked at. Saturday, the Home Depot SEC football rolls into Athens, Georgia, as two teams tangle to stay in the conference race with Daniel Cobb and the Auburn Tigers get after David Green and the Bulldogs of Georgia. It's a showdown between the hedges, Auburn, Georgia, Saturday, right here on CBS. And Michael Vick is tossing the football. The left-hander, the rookie, the number one pick in last year's NFL draft. Brady, the pitch. 
Antoine Smith picking his way down to the 42-yard line. Well, the Patriots now have a chance to really, really get the Falcons down, really get them down. After what's happened to the Falcons offense the last three series, to start this series with a running play that gains that many yards up a hole that's that wide open. Score is still within reach for Atlanta. It's 17 to seven, but a touchdown now would be would be really hard for them to come back from. Antoine Smith now 56 yards on 12 carries. Sticks his nose in for more. Let's head back to New York City. Jim Nance with an update. All right, thank you, Bowler. Steve McNair has run for a touchdown and now thrown for his second. Derek Mason hauls it in for the lead. The Titans have come back from 10 down. Go in front 21-17, early fourth. Back to you. It's good to see Steve McNair back and doing well. He struggled so much this year. Well, there's a, a quarterback struggling right now. Chandler on the bench. Falcons trying to bring the blitz and the pitch to the right side. Antoine Smith. High steps it out of bounds. Stops the clock at the 44-yard line. Good pursuit by Brooking, who was so active in that first quarter and has not played a big factor for Atlanta defensively since. No, he really hasn't. They've gotten offensive linemen up on him to block him better. And this is a long way for Brooking to have to go. As a matter of fact, if Brooking isn't there, there's a good chance that Smith would go for another seven or eight yards. That, that's good pursuit. And look at the nose. Boy, he's already bleeding. That's a middle linebacker. 11-yard gain. Antoine Smith now 70 on the day. Brookie with 10 tackles. No wonder the nose bleeding. Buckley's checked in as a wide out. They go up and over the middle. Dangerous! Oh, you got to be kidding! It's pulled down. Troy Brown. Touchdown! Look at Drew Bledsoe. He can't believe it. He just can't believe it. He's like, why can't that happen to me? Well, when you're living right, you're living right. He's throwing for Patton. Into coverage. This could have been intercepted by Ashley Ambrose. And Troy Brown just looks up and sees a big football. Looks like the immaculate reception, <laughs> except the guy that caught it weighs about, you know, 70 pounds less than Franco. Look at Brady. Hey, okay, I'll take it. Extra point by Benetieri. Oh, yeah, you've seen this business long enough, you see some crazy things. Ping pong, pinball, whatever you want to call it. 24-7 with 34 seconds left in the third quarter. Troy Brown with a, uh, a Houdini-like touchdown. Yeah, that was that was Houdini, David Copperfield. <laughs> Look, Troy Brown can't believe it. That's one of those things you work all your life in football, but you don't get that play because you worked hard. You got that play because you just were the luckiest man in the in three counties, and he was. And you know what? He'll take it. But when you're a hot quarterback, things happen to you. Understand, uh, Trevor, you were right on with your uh, look at Chandler. He is bent really now to the right as he took the shot, we understand, from the ribs, headed to the sideline, and will be x rayed And, you know, you got to give him credit for standing in the pocket and taking those hits, trying to make something happen. But all this year, he's had outstanding protection. They geared up for New England, not realizing what kind of adjustments New England was going to make. The offensive front, the offensive game plan of Atlanta in talking to them in practice on Thursday and Friday, they said they weren't going to make any real big adjustments as we look at Michael Vick ready to come in because they weren't sure what New England was going to do. But what New England did was attack them, and the result was the quarterback is out. Swift kick taken inside the 25-yard line. That's Crumpler, the tight end, with good hands and good field position for Vick at the 37. And again, word coming up from the field to us that Chandler's going to be out for the game. So the game uh, is now in, into the hands of the rookie, Michael Vick. And you look at that play-calling chart that Dan Reeves has, there's probably 150 plays on that for Chandler. Michael Vick is going to have about a dozen that he's going to run. And probably eight of them are Michael Vick pull the ball down and run. Dan Reeves told us something very interesting yesterday. He said, you know what, he, he's, he's a great player, he's going to be a great player, but not 
that particularly ready to play. He says, language of a quarterback has to be learned before you're ready. Michael Vick is still learning that language. He's learning the language of calling the plays and what the defense is doing against him. Very complex, still learning. Vick will try to throw on his first attempt, but cannot escape the grasp of Mike Vrabel, the outside linebacker, along with Pleasant. How does this change defensively the mindset of New England now? Well, now New England, rather than attack, New England is better off rushing their four guys, maybe five. Don't try to get to Vic in the pocket. Keep him in the pocket. Don't let him run out of there. He runs a 4-3-40. Make him read seven and eight guys back in coverage and see if he'll throw the ball to you. That ends the third quarter with the score. New England leading Atlanta 24-7. We'll return to the Georgia Dome right after this message and a word from your local station. Tom Brady's three touchdown throws, his arm, his poise has led New England to a 24-7 lead. Chris Chandler in the locker room out, x-rays on his ribs, and now the rookie Michael Vick under center for Atlanta. Pitch to Maurice Smith. They're still knocking helmets out there. Smith up around the 39-yard line, and Teddy Bruschi. I tell you, that's, that's a football man. That is Teddy Bruschi, yeah. six-year pro in Arizona. And you know what he did there? He knew that he had the young quarterback, and so he, he stemmed up into the line of scrimmage, came back. Stemmed up into the line, came back right in Michael Vick's face, right in the middle of the line of scrimmage, to get Michael to have to look at him and try to confuse him. Now you talk about limited offensive plays for Vic. Is there going to be a lot of improv uh, to improvise out there for him as well? Because of his speed? That's part of the game plan for him. Yes. They've got to get him to the perimeter to run. Vic stands, throws. He's got an arm and he hits across the middle. Finneran. Finneran. Out of bounds inside the 15. Matt Stevens gave him the push. And look how hard that ball came in. Finneran did a great job of hanging on to it. Michael Vick has got an absolute cannon for an arm. Finneran's on the outside. Now he breaks in. Look how fast this ball comes in. Boom! And he catches it with his hands. Boy, those are those are big, soft hands in order to be able to pull in a ball that goes that fast. But look at the difference in the change now. All of a sudden, they've got the ball in touchdown position. Down 24-7. to seven. They've got new life. And who gave it to him? This young man. 50-yard completion from Victor Finneran. First down at the 12-yard line. Maurice Smith up the middle. Boy, wide open hole to the six. Ted Johnson making the tackle. He's filling in for the injured Brian Cox inside. Now all of a sudden, this game doesn't feel like it's over. This crowd is absolutely energized much more than they've been since the end of the first quarter, and that energizes the team. Well, you put a touchdown right now in the end zone early in this fourth quarter. It's a, it's a whole new field. Mo Smith now with 14 carries for 81 yards. Second down and five. Mathis, the motion man. Vic, handoff. Off the right side goes Smith, close to a first down. Johnson again wrapped him up. Well, Maurice Smith in for the injured Jamal Williams. Jamal with his second ACL. He tore up the opposite knee that he tore up the first time around. And Maurice Smith has some similar qualities as Jamal. Maurice Smith is a big back. He's not as strong and bruising. He is a little faster hitting the hole. But what he doesn't have as much as Jamal is the ability to create and cut back. And that's why you see runs like we just saw from Maurice Smith, where he hits the whole call and drags defenders with him. You know, he was undrafted from North Carolina a &T. Signed his contract at the Waffle House in Greensboro, North Carolina. Mo Smith pushing. Trying to punish the guys in white, but he's pushed back by Matt Stevens. Now, he'd like to sign the free agent deal at the Waffle House in Greensboro. I tell you, at the Waffle House, how would he ever have expected that signing that deal at that restaurant would get him right down here in big games like this? And that's what he wanted to do. And he did a good job running the ball, but now they're going to settle for a field goal. But I'll tell you what, the combination of Michael Fick and an energized Maurice Smith getting him down there, this thing no longer feels like it's over. We have us a lot of excitement down there. Feely will try officially from 21. 
Well, he's been asked to do a lot today from 58 and 49. This is merely like an extra point. Chip shot. Feely. And the kick is up and good. And now there are two touchdowns down. 11 minutes to go. Game's in reach. the games on NFL.com and after the games you can get in-depth analysis and recaps from the experts only at NFL.com or AOL keyword NFL.com. Well after the injury to Chandler Vick drives Atlanta down for a three pointer. Kevin Falk at the goal line breaks a tackle and is taken down around the 17 yard line. Tom Brady returns. Eight different receivers that Brady's cooked up, that's uh, hooked up with today. One, and really you wonder the future. A lot of talk around Terry Glenn. Terry Glenn, lots of problems, huge distraction, and you know he's he's sitting at home right now, and uh, that's probably where he ought to stay. Was in motion, they hand it off, and a big gain for Antoine Smith. Rookie, who put a band aid on that busted up nose, made the tackle. And getting back to Glenn, there's all sorts of different situations at hand. You know, uh, there's uh, arbitration that's that's awaiting, uh, and you know, hamstrings that was supposedly pulled. Uh, we talked to Coach Bill uh, Belichick yesterday. I'd say the head coach to me, Trevor, looked absolutely worn out. When he talked about Terry Glenn, I mean, worn out. Well, making something out of nothing. Mark Edwards was stopped, rolled off his tackler, and picked up three to the 33. Well, you know, you talk about Coach being worn out yesterday. Terry Glenn has practiced at a total of seven days with the team including mini camps and offseason workouts since May of this last year and I've got to tell you this that, that Terry Glenn nobody nobody's perfect nobody's completely innocent in this but I'll tell you when we're done with this play well oh, that middle it was uh, closed tight Chuck Wiley Number 99. The thing about Terry Glenn, though, Craig, is this that his problems in the final analysis stem from the fact that emotionally he's 12. You know, everything is about him, and he thinks that everything that's bad that happens to him is somebody else's fault. Frankly, he's replaced Ryan Leaf as the reigning selfish whiner of the NFL, and that's a tall order. Atlanta coming strong. Brady takes his seat at the 25. I'll tell you what, how much, you know, if you've got a guy the talent of Terry Glenn on the field, maybe, maybe in a situation like this, it would be helpful to a quarterback like Tom Brady. But he's not there, and instead it's Atlanta's offense that rises up. Now here's what's going on. Brady goes back to pass, the defense converges around him and sacks him. Now Michael Vick comes in and leads him to a field goal. Now they stop them, make them punt from deep in their own territory, and Michael Vick is coming back with nine minutes to go. Ken Walter at his in own 10 yard line. Good kick. Beautiful. Turns it over. Gordon pedals back at the 29. Gordon heads to the far sideline and is taken down, dragged down at the 44. Patrick Pass made the tackle. 46-yard boot and a 15-yard return. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Campbell's Chunky. Soup that eats like a meal. Sprint PCS, the clear alternative to cellular. And by Honda. This holiday, it's gifts that go time on motorcycles and ATVs at your Honda dealer. Welcome back, Georgia Dome. Atlanta with the football. Craig Bowerjack, Trevor Manich in its fine field position. 
Chandler out, rib injury. Michael Vick, the rookie, with his second offensive series. On the left hander, elusive, tucks and runs. Watch out, 50. Vick at the 40. Vick at the 30. Vick lunges to the 21 yard line. And Craig, we said, you asked, what should they do? I said, don't blitz the guy. Keep him in the pocket. Keep everybody else back. What do they do there? They blitz. When the blitz doesn't get him and he takes off running, there's a lot of space back there. Here they come. They're bringing seven guys. And the rest of them are man coverage. So when Vic takes off, those guys are chasing their receivers down the field. This is what Michael Vick was drafted to do. 35-yard pickup. The pitch, Maurice Smith. Flags are down. Mo Smith to the 18-yard line, wrapped up by Brandon Mitchell. As we look at the flag, my question is still, though, Trevor, very simple. Can he take that type of beating consistently? He's a six-footer. He weighs 215. I just wonder how the durability is going to hold up. Well, the answer to that is no. You could put a fire hydrant in there, and the fire hydrant wouldn't be able to take a beating. That quarterbacks will take if they stick their head in there. What Vic needs to do is make sure that when his journey is over, when they've got him corralled, that he gets his lovely first round draft choice, huge bonus quarterback self on the ground Holding. or out of bounds. Offense, number 70, 10 yard penalty. Repeat the down, first down. Well, it's looking like the first quarter all yeah. over again with that. Dick Hamtack was very busy uh, in the first 15 minutes of play with a lot of flags. 7.59 left here in the Dome in Atlanta. So now first down and 20 at the 31-yard line of New England. Patriots in control after this first quarter. They lead 24-10. Now they're dropping out of there. Big throws over the middle. Tipped away at the last moment. Good defense. Secondary tied along from the left corner. New England learned their lesson. They brought four guys. They kept Vic in the pocket. Right now, he is least dangerous passing from the pocket because he doesn't yet understand the nuances of reading coverages, and that could have been an interception as Ty Law came in there. Now, he thinks he's got a touchdown, but 24 sneaks in Ty Law. He doesn't have it, but New England needs to keep him where he threw that ball, in the pocket. Ty Law, a pro bowler back in 98, second down 20. The clock stopped with 737 left. Vic. Here he goes. Vic. Still on his feet. Leans to the 16-yard line. It's just amazing to me how much ground he chews up when he starts to run. I mean, there are guys that are fast, and then there are guys that just seem to flow forward at a speed that doesn't seem human. 15-yard pickup, and don't be mistaken here. He's a six-footer, 215, packed with power. He is, and look at the acceleration. When he turns it up, the acceleration is what's startling to a defense. Third down. And five. They're coming with the heat. Vic throws and complete. Boy, Vic under the heavy rush of New England. And he fell at a very funny angle over Roberto Garza that time. He's okay. That's a good thing. But, boy, it was, it was an odd angle that his body took relative to his lower leg as he went down. Take, take a look at his legs now. Just watch Michael Vick's legs. As he gets hit and goes down, this is going to be a really weird angle right there. That's scary. And they're going for it. Fourth and five. They need to get to the 11 yard line. Vic on the rollout. Left hander. Oh, he took it. And the numbers. A hard shot. Lawyer Malloy. Now, here's why you can blitz down here. You can blitz down here because there's less room for him to run. Defenders are packed in. Huge stop by New England. Big night on CBS. Share a night with America as your favorite stars celebrate the best in television on the Emmy Awards. It's live, including a special performance by Barbara Streisand. Live tonight on CBS. Antoine Smith trying to use some clock to the 26-yard line. Knocked down by Wiley. 
All right, here's the question. There's Drew Bledsoe, nine-year pro, Washington State, number one pick back in 93. Tom Brady, who was a sixth-rounder, the seventh quarterback taken in the 2000 draft down in Michigan. When this young man or this man gets healthy, there's, there's a situation in New England that Bill Belichick's going to have to address. You know, and he's not sure what he's going to do. It's a great problem to have, but it is going to be an interesting problem. Brady, 21 of 30 for 250 and three touchdown throws. Falcons defense trying to flex it up front, not much. Kearney led the way. Well, you, you, you talk about the, the problem that Belichick's going to have in a few weeks when Bledsoe's healthy again. He told us that he doesn't know. I mean, even if Johnny Unitas and John Elway yeah. were on his bench, he said he wouldn't know. I'll tell you this. That if Johnny Unitas, John Elway, and all five Backstreet Boys were on the bench, you go with the hot hand. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by the Principal Financial Group. We understand what you're working for. And by the United States Marine Corps, the change is forever. Third down at seven. Atlanta coming with some heat. Brady pushed out of the pocket. Oh, he hit from behind. The ball was in motion, and they're going to say incomplete pass. When McBurrows was there, along with 47, Chris Hudson. Well, I give him credit for trying to make a play, but he sure pays a price here. It's man coverage downfield. Three guys, they bring eight. <laughs> and he, whoa, his helmet's off his head just about. But give him credit for, for courage for trying to deliver this ball because he knows it's man coverage. But boy, when you're a quarterback and get hit hard enough that your chin straps around your nose, you've been hit. Sixth punt of the day for Walter. And it's Gordon back around the 34-yard line. <laughs> it has been a rough day, hasn't it? High hang time. Gordon, though, is going to take it. Dancers now heads the other way. And is pulled down at the 25-yard line. Thursday on Survivor, even if you've watched every episode, prepare yourself for a whole new game where the only people more surprised than you will be the survivors themselves. Don't miss an all-new Survivor Thursday on CBS. Well, he's rubbing his nose right now. His chin strap was up there on the last play. Michael Vick still has time, 5.32. Also, two timeouts plus the two and a warning. Oh, he took a shot from the blind side and bringing the helmet, the pads, the shoes. Otis Smith. That's the exact same blitz that hit Chris Chandler three times the second half and knocked him out of the game. And this time they drill Michael Vick. He's looking back to his Untouched. right and bam! Well, that, that could be a rip shot right there. Now, I think Atlanta can't leave him exposed like this in the pocket. They've got to roll Michael Vick out, run quarterback draws, get him out of the pocket because he's not going to win this game from the pocket. He's going to win the game by stressing the defense with his legs. Eight sacks today. The team record dates back to 1963 with 10 sacks. They've got time to close in on it. Vick's trying to improvise, throws, and complete. No, but a flag down at the 20. Yeah, it's down in the holding area. Yeah, holding. But Michael Vick, in his stage of development, he played two years of college football. So he, he was a sophomore last year. He's a junior this year. You know what? Very few NFL quarterbacks with four years of college football come in their rookie year and understand what they're seeing defenses do in front of them. To win this game today, Michael Vick. The penalty is declined. Third down. Michael Vick cannot be required to be a pocket passer like Chris Chandler. He's got to get out. Now, he gets a little skittish after this throw. He drills the ball, and now, see, he's been hit. Yeah. That that huge hit on that corner blitz, the last play has gotten to him. They can't let him stand in the pocket. Third down at 10. Patriots with a fine job mixing it up. And right there, another blitz from the corner to Bucky Jones. 
And I think the chin straps up around the nose again this time. Well, that different reason, though, wasn't from a hit. This was from a, from a, a face mask penalty on Tabucky Jones. Flag at the 17-yard uh, line. Well, that's an angry referee right there. Yeah, they're going to call that. Tabucky Jones came in, reached out and grabbed Vic's face mask for a helmet and drew it up. That's why the chin strap ended up there. But this is the same blitz, same one. First Bang. Foul. Defense. Wow. All right, look at Roberto Garza, 63, just barely getting a piece of Tabucky Jones. Yeah, he, he doesn't get there. The critical thing there, though, is that Michael Vick, we saw him be really skittish on the pass before this. Now, he was sandwiched in between two big plays where he got hit hard. Now, that was a penalty. They get a first down. That's fine. But what will it mean to the psyche of a young quarterback? Have to be impressed with the blitz packages again that New England has brought today. They have mixed it up. They knocked out Chris Chandler. And now they wanted Vic. They've got Vic, but yet how can he perform with such heavy rush with the heavy pressure that New England puts in his face time and time again? He's a pocket passer this time. Mathis on the far side, incomplete. Well, and this time, instead of blitzing, they dropped way back out. Back into a soft cover, two, seven guys in coverage, four on the pass rush, and Michael Vick is being used as a pure pocket passer. That's good for development, but we're trying to win a football game. And he will win this game with his legs, not his arm. Vick, one of six for 50 yards. And when I say that, when, is, when with his legs, I mean getting out of the pocket, forcing the defense to come out of their coverage. Then he can hit receivers. Christian in motion. Christian at the 35, driving and then tackled down to the 37-yard line. They'll pick up five. Ty Law in the mix all day with another tackle. I'll tell you, Romeo Cornell this time, he only rushed three guys, dropped eight back into coverage. So they're doing everything you can do to a young quarterback. There's Romeo calling in those signals. He's changed up. He came with a, a corner blitz, rush three, drop seven, or drop eight, rush four, drop seven, and now it's third and five. Clock running, under four and a half left. Vic on the rollout. Yep. Good coverage. Forced to throw it away. Fourth down. Fourth down. 4-12 left, two timeouts for the Falcons. And I go for it. And the two-minute warning. I go for it, and they're going to go for it. Very good call by Dan Reeves. But I will be shocked if they don't roll him out of this pocket and give him a pass-run choice because that's what he did at Virginia Tech. And this man, defensive coordinator Romeo Cornell of New England, he knows that too. 0 for 1 today on fourth down conversions. 2 of 4 on the season. Kozlowski in motion. Fourth and five. Again, heavy pressure. Incomplete. And New England will take it on downs. My goodness, Craig. How did he get his long runs earlier when he first came in in relief of Chandler? When New England blitzed and he ran out of there into an empty secondary because everybody was blitzing. Well, here he drops back. Here comes the blitz again, but he stands in and tries to deliver the ball. You know, Tabucky Jones is unblocked. You know, when they're doing that, if you have a called play to allow him to get away from that blitz before it has time to get there, then he has a chance to run. But if you just have him drop back in the pocket, then it's that result. Tom Brady stays in at quarterback, first and 10. Falcon 37 yard line. And the ball goes to Antoine Smith. Crockett made the tackle. Smith, a physical, a back who, who really, he's been in rhythm today. I mean, he, he talked about just rhythm. 19 carries, 85 yards. It's the 19 carries that matter. Antoine Smith wants 20 carries a game or more. He feels that he is most effective when he can pound and pound and wear down a defense, and his next carry will be his 20th. That's well over a season average of 15 carries and 51 yards. 
Second down. Smith stopped at the line of scrimmage but lunges for maybe a yard. Chris Draft made the tackle. And the clock runs at 318. Falcons have two timeouts left. And the clock still runs. You know, New England, an interesting story, lost their first two of the season, Trevor, to Cincinnati and to the Jets. They beat the Colts twice and San Diego in overtime. Tough loss last week against uh, Denver, 31-20. They head back home. I mean, the home schedule, look at this. They, they, don't, they can spend the rest of the month of November. They got Buffalo, St. Louis, and New Orleans before they go back on the road uh, first week of December. Yeah, and St. Louis, New Orleans, two very tough teams. Don't discount Buffalo. Well, New England is called timeout, so, you know, we saw a pretty good defense today from New England. And on this date in the history, L.A. Rams, Seattle Seahawks, November 4th is 79. 22 years ago in Seattle is where then Los Angeles Rams held Jim Zorn and the Seahawks to an NFL record negative seven total yards. Rams no doubt won the game by a final of 24 to nothing. Negative seven yards. You, you can quarterback sneak every play and get more than negative seven yards. Total yards today. New England putting up over 340. Brady with three touchdown throws. Did you get your answer, Trevor, about his his ability to, to bounce back off a of four-pick fourth quarter last week? Well, I have, but I think Atlanta has, too. They wanted to test him early, and when we talked to him on Saturday, yesterday, he looked out underneath that Boston Red Sox hat under that brim and smiled and said, I like it when they come after me because it gives me a chance to go over the top, and he has done that today. 243 left fourth quarter third down and five again the pitch inside the 25 up to around the 23 yard line draft who's been very active for Atlanta making the tackle on Antoine Smith and Antoine Smith is really showing me something here he, he's running downhill a lot of speed hitting the line and making moves Usually he's known as the guy that just pounds into the line, but he's really made a lot of good moves to make tacklers miss in this game. So this New England team, as we count down to the two-minute mark, Bill uh, Belichick has really changed things around. A lot of free agents, a lot of new faces. And we hit the two-minute warning. New England 24, Atlanta 10. And a reminder tonight here on CBS 60 Minutes, followed by the 53rd Annual Emmy Award Show with a special live performance by Barbara Streisand. Look forward to that. Craig Bullock back along with Trevor Maddich here at the uh, Georgia Dome in Atlanta. Tom Brady, impressive three touchdowns, Trevor. Also, New England's defense today showing different blitz packages and really disturbing not only Chandler but Michael Vick here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and those are the two stories of this game, really. One is defensive coordinator Romeo Cornell uh, making adjustments to his game plan that Atlanta was was not prepared for attacked knocks Chandler out of the game and has knocked Michael Vick's confidence for a loop hitting him but the bigger story is Tom Brady Tom Brady everyone wanted to see after throwing four interceptions in the fourth quarter against Denver last week how would he come back it is easy to play when things are going your way it is hard when things are not this is his first opportunity to come back after adversity. And what he has shown us is that he has the resilience to keep focused on what makes him successful and do those things. In this game, he still does not have an interception. And there's Drew Bledsoe still on the mend. Understand uh, throwing. In fact, we saw him throw around th about 11.15 this morning and was throwing the ball Pretty well. Coming up next, don't forget Cleveland at Chicago, or you will see the Chiefs taking on Doug Flutie and the San Diego Chargers. Antoine Smith, big ball. Out of bounds at the 11. Well, you know, that, that four interception performance by Brady in the fourth quarter, two of those were probably his fault, as we see a flag is down now. Or is there? I thought I saw a yellow flash. Yep, there is a flag down. And New England's players are going back, so it'll probably be against the Patriots. But Tom Brady, two of those interceptions. Offense, number 67, 10-yard penalty. Repeat the down. 
Second down. Two were Brady's fault, two were not. But it's interesting that Drew Bledsoe was the first guy in the locker room to talk to the media after the game, and he stood up for Brady, said that he has confidence in Tom. The team still has top confidence in Brady, and it would have been very easy for a veteran looking at the possibility of a difficult ride to get his own job back when he's healthy. It would have been easy to plant a few little seeds and say something like, you know, a young quarterback, sometimes they flash early and then they don't succeed late. Bledsoe has been in Brady's corner the whole time. Pitch to Smith. Changes direction. Watch out. Antoine Smith lowers his pads and bangs to the 11. And that's a first down, and the clock still rolls. Atlanta's got one timeout left. Looks like they're not going to use it. How about that? Yeah. First 100 yard rusher since the day after Christmas 1999 and it was Terry Allen who went for 126. Yep. And you know Bill Belichick has got to be proud of his guys. You know Antoine Smith stepping up and giving him a running performance they haven't had in so long. Tom Brady managing the offense and I'll tell you I want to go back to Bledsoe because if you were not a Drew Bledsoe fan before this the way he has comported himself You've got to be a Drew Bledsoe fan now. Oh. I absolutely respect everything he has done during this Tom Brady run. Trevor, let me ask you this. Why in this league and with fans, why can't two quarterbacks with talent? You know the injury rate in the National Football League with, with quarterbacks? Flutie and Johnson had the problem in Buffalo. They split. Why can't two talented players coexist? Well, the, prob the reason is that the starting quarterback gets about $7 million a year. That's why. And so you want to be the starter. There's too much money involved now. You don't want to sit back and, and wait your time. And Tom Brady, you know, right now we got us a controversy because once again, no matter what, Belichick has got to go with the hot hand. Final seconds tick away here at the Georgia Dome. A big, big road win for New England. They were down seven to start this game. And they're going to walk out of here with a 24 to 10 win. Three touchdown throws for the second year quarterback out of Michigan, Tom Brady. Michael Vick, I'm sure good things to come for the rookie out of Virginia Tech. It's just a matter of fine tuning, uh, Trevor, what the Falcons, how they're going to try to use him in what, in what regard? Pocket, roll him out, or improvise? Normally, when they get Michael Vick into games, it's on specific series with a specific play set. He had to come in this game in a situation where he had to run the offense and try to bring the team back. It was a very difficult position to put him in. He got hit hard, but the future looks good. I think three years from now, the Atlanta Falcons will be the most exciting team in the NFL, and it will be because of Michael Vick. Tom Brady is going to make things interesting, too, up, uh, up north. Yeah, he really is. And once again, Drew Bledsoe, he knows that he's going to have to win his job back in practice. And here's what really turned the tide in this game. Immaculate reception two, maybe. It looks like it. And right there, the pass was knocked around, and Troy Brown picked it clean and ran it in for the touchdown. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. And that's just one of the eight receivers that he hit. The ninth receiver is at home, Terry Glenn. Well, New England now evens a record at four and four. Atlanta drops to three and four. Game two of the doubleheader is coming up next here on CBS. New England 24, Atlanta 10.